Hey, it's Mr. Shrum, and I am back with another mastery test answer, work through, walk through, whatever you want to call it. But this is all about putting what we have learned onto graphs or looking at graphs and seeing what kind of information we can draw from them. And in this first question, we're given this graph. It, um, it increases, this is velocity on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. So we see an object straight positive increase in velocity and then it sort of curves and then curves downward and then straight velocity back to zero. So what does that mean? You can see these different points from start to A to B to C to D. It's broken up into sections. From zero to A, that is known as uniform positive acceleration. If something is increasing in velocity, that is uniform positive acceleration. However, when it's curved like this and increasing from A to B, that is non-uniform positive acceleration. So that was our answer. B to C is non-uniform negative acceleration. And C to D is uniform negative acceleration. And that means the slope of the graph is acceleration. If you're given a velocity versus time graph, the slope of the line will tell you the acceleration because the change in velocity, the rate of change in velocity over time equals acceleration. And that's the slope of this line. So to show you better, So we have uniform positive, that's just a line with a constant slope. But then you have these curved lines and that means non-uniform positive. The slope is changing along this line. And same goes for this, but the slope is now negative. The slope is changing, but then we have negative slope here and that is a constant acceleration in the negative. Uniform positive, uniform negative, non-uniform positive, non-uniform negative. So hopefully that clears some things up for you on a velocity versus time graph. Number two. So this graph shows the velocity of particle A, that's particle A, and then particle B through time. They intersect right about here on this graph. What is the acceleration of particles A and B at point zero or point O? So that point right there. Well, the acceleration on a velocity versus time graph, acceleration equals the slope of the lines. So you'll just look for the slope of line A and line B, okay? So let's take A for instance. Let's take this point up here. We have point zero to, or well, the point is at zero, two, and then this point is at one, zero. And then B, we have zero, one, and then two, zero. And then I'll stop sharing so you can look at that better. Bam. So this is the first point 
we looked at for A, and this is the second point. First point for B, second point for B. So what's the slope of A? Well, we'll take zero minus two, or uh, two, zero minus two, subtract the y's, divide that. Just kidding. Zero minus two, and then one minus zero. What did I do? Yeah, don't make that mistake. Negative two over one, so you're left with negative two for the slope of A. And that'll be uh, meters per second squared. And then you have the slope of B. You take this point, y2 minus y1, minus one, and then x2 minus x1. Negative one over two. Negative zero point five. Okay, so don't get confused with that slope. Delta y, delta x, or y two minus y one, x two minus x one, slope. Okay, on a velocity versus time graph, the acceleration is the slope of a line. And then you find points on the line and then find the slope to find the acceleration. Okay, let's go back. So we chose the right answer, perfect, three. So for three, We're given another velocity versus time graph, V over T. And we're asked, what is the displacement of the particle in the time interval five seconds to eight seconds? So five to eight. Well, what do you know about displacement and graphs on a velocity versus time graph? If acceleration is the slope of the line on a velocity versus time graph, the area underneath the line is the displacement. So we'll look at this area and find the area underneath the line. And really, there's nothing here, but there is that little area in this triangle. And I'll draw that out. So we're just looking at five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I'll stop sharing to look at this. So I zoomed in on that little area and we're just looking from five to eight seconds. Okay, so you can ignore the rest to the right and to the left. We're just looking at this section. And you're looking for the area under this line. 
and it's a triangle. And we know that the area of a triangle is one half times the base times the height. So if you look here and plug in, you have one half, the base, that's just one between this area, one, and then the height is three, okay? One half times one times three, and that gives you one 0.5 meters for the displacement, okay? So if you're given a velocity versus time graph, the slope equals the acceleration and the area under the curve. Displacement. And we will have more practice with that too. Next question. In the graph, which two regions show the particle undergoing zero acceleration and negative acceleration respectively. So where is it zero and where is it negative? And another way to ask this is where is the slope zero? Where is acceleration zero? And then when is the slope negative? Look at the slope. Okay. So from B to C, there's no slope. So BC shows zero acceleration. We narrowed it down to A or C. Answers A or C. And then from C to D, the slope is negative. So this is the correct answer. So look for the slope if you asked about acceleration on a velocity versus time graph. Next question. In this graph, what is the displacement of the particle in the last two seconds? The last two seconds will be here. And once again, we're looking for the area underneath this line in the last two seconds. So I'll draw it out. Time, velocity. And we're just looking at the last two seconds. So I'll stop sharing this. There's uh, my notes from number four. Where's acceleration zero negative? Look at the slope. But for this one, I zoomed in on the last two seconds of this velocity versus time graph. And all you have to do is find the area of that square or rectangle. And so we have the area of a rectangle. Uh, base times height or length times width, however you want to say that. But the area equals, that will be two. Six minus four equals two times one. That'll be two meters. Displacement, displacement. 
There we go. So on a velocity versus time graph, the area underneath the line equals displacement. And the slope of the line would be acceleration, but there is no acceleration. So what does that tell you? The velocity stays the same. Hopefully this is starting to make sense to you. In the graph, during which time period does the particle undergo the greatest displacement? So which area has the most, um, or which part of the line has the most area underneath it? Okay, because that is the displacement. So from A to B, that's the area under the line. That would be the displacement. From B to C, that would be the displacement, this whole area underneath. And then from C to D, that's the area. Well, a shortcut would be this section has the most area underneath the graph. So that's, that's all you really need to know. B to C is the answer. If things were harder to figure out, you would divide the shapes and then find the area of each shape and analyze it that way. But this one, you can easily tell from B to C has the most area underneath the line. Select the answer. Was the average acceleration during the time interval zero to 10 seconds? Zero to 10. Well, we have this first section and then zero here. So the first thing to do would be to find the slope of this line. So from point P, that would be five pi five from zero, zero. Okay. Well, the slope of that first section is one. So the slope here is one from point, point zero to P. The slope is one, the slope equals zero point P to Q. Or you don't even go to point Q, you just go to 10 actually. Well, the slope is here from for the first five seconds and it's zero for the next five seconds. What was the average acceleration? Well, the simplest way to say that is one half. Here, I'll, I'll write it out so it's easier to look at.
Okay. So the slope for the first five seconds from point zero to P would be one. The slope from P to 10 seconds is zero. So to find the average for the first five seconds, the slope is one, the acceleration is one, plus five times the acceleration for the next five seconds is zero and divide that by 10 seconds. That will be five over 10 and that's 0 0.5 meters per second squared. Um, an alternative way to do that, or an alternative way to write that out Average acceleration, delta V over T. You still get the same answer um, using the old method here, but it's good to think about it in this terms too. Okay. was the instantaneous acceleration of the particle at point B? Well, it's actually zero. At that very top point, the slope is zero because it's changing direction. So the acceleration would be zero. The slope is zero right at that top point. Which graph shows constant acceleration with correctly placed independent and dependent variables. Constant acceleration would be a positive, or well, it doesn't have to be positive, but these are all positive. A straight line on a velocity versus time graph for graph one. That's true. Time versus displacement, that doesn't really make sense. Graph three, that's not correctly placed variables, and then displacement versus time, that's constant velocity. So velocity versus time graph, the constant slope is constant acceleration. So graph one is the answer. During which two time intervals does that particle undergo equal displacement? A, B, and D, E. That means this area equals the area under here. So you would take this area, one half times base times height, two divided by two equals one times 10, that would be 10. So 10 times two is 20 divided by two equals 10. And you'll do that here too. Okay. So you can break this into a triangle, one half base times height, plus the base times height of this rectangle.
and I'll show that to you. One half base times height, one half base times height plus base times height. One half times two times 10 times per second squared. So one half base two times four. Plus two times three. Okay. Here we go. So I took the area under that point from A to B. And from point D to E, one half base times height, that equals 10 meters per second squared. And then one half base times height plus base times height, because this was a triangle. But then we had a triangle plus a rectangle shape, sort of that thing going on. And so you just divide that. and then go from there. But I hope that was clear for you. And if you have any questions, be sure to answer or be sure to ask me and then I'll answer them on Canvas. But thank you and I will see you next time. Bye.